have an idea in your mind of something you want and you deserve to get it. So how do you get there? Well, welcome to the Idea Space, a podcast devoted to helping you overcome frustration and make what you want a reality. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, high school teacher turned entrepreneur. Now I'm a business development coach. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, overwhelmed, or lost. Every week, I share topics, tools, and strategies to help you move toward that thing you want. Create time and energy to do the things you love, get clarity on what you really want and how to get there, and most importantly, stop feeling alone with your challenges. Whether you've wanted to create a better business, job, relationship, hobby, or self, I know there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it with confidence and clarity. Ready to have it? Let's go. Hi, welcome to this week's Idea Space Podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, and this week I'm talking about why people aren't paying you yet. I want you to imagine that you are hurtling down the highway and your car charger stops working on your phone and your phone's battery is at like 4%. And you know what this feels like, right? It's all red up there and panic starts to settle into your brain. And you're like, how am I going to survive if my phone dies? Even though for years we've all driven around without any phones because that was something we'd only seen on the Jetsons. But now we're totally in a committed relationship with our phone and we're freaking out because we are sweating out a 4% battery. We start to worry like, how am I going to respond to texts that come in? And how will I check Instagram when I get to where I'm going? And Like for real, what if I get into an accident and I need to make an emergency phone call? So you see that there's a gas station up ahead with a convenience store and you're like, oh, maybe I need to stop. I know they sell those car chargers in there. Should I stop? And you think about what that car charger will mean. Getting your phone charged will mean you get peace of mind, access to the world and ease. And in that moment, you know it's worth it. Even though you're going to go into that convenience store and that car charger is going to be like 20 bucks and you know these things normally go for $7.99 in a normal store, but this is not a normal store in a normal situation. This is a 4% battery situation. So you spend almost three times what you'd normally spend because this is worth it to you. You buy it in that moment because it's valuable. You understand its worth. You understand that it solves your pain point And you also understand the cost of not buying it. And this is the thing that many entrepreneurs lose sight of when considering pricing themselves and the value that they bring. We like to think, oh my God, I've got so much experience and certifications and training and education, so people are going to pay me big time for the shit I know. But that is not how it works. People don't pay for your certifications, they don't pay for your trainings or your degrees. People don't pay you for what you know. So that's not why you can charge what you want to charge them. People pay for the results that you get them. Think of it this way. Your clients are the phone and you are the charger. They pay when their pain point is so big that they're finally willing to invest to get the problem solved. So remember, all month I've been talking about people pay for transformation not information. And until you understand the transformation that you bring to people, you're going to struggle with how to price and value your offers. So if you're struggling with this, let's explore some ways to think about this. I want you to think about knowing what you're worth and also knowing what you're worth to certain people. Because as a sweeping generalization, I'll say that most women I work with highly undervalue themselves. And that's why they keep paying for more and more trainings. They have this false belief that the more training I have, the more valuable I am. And of course, the more valuable you are, the more you can charge, but they're asking the wrong questions. Instead of asking, what do I need to learn? Entrepreneurs need to start asking, what results do I get from my clients? They need to ask, what makes me special? How do I get results from my clients? And so I want you to think about the transformation that you get for people. Where are you valuable? How do you make your clients' lives better for them? And here I want to share a moment in my life where I had this huge aha about the benefits that I bring, how I made people's lives better. And it actually goes back to when I was a teacher. This is about 14 years ago. 
I had been a high school teacher for about six years at the time, and I had just gotten a new job at a new high school. And I was fairly intimidated because my colleagues were incredibly smart, very accomplished. And I thought my new department chair was brilliant, visionary. And visionary people have always intimidated me because I've never considered myself a visionary. So all that year, I sat in meeting after meeting where we got nothing done. And these brilliant people flung ideas around. Everything was like, what if we tried this? Or wouldn't it be incredible to do that? And meetings would come to an end with an entire whiteboard filled with ideas that would never be implemented. So by the end of that school year, I had had enough. I was frustrated and annoyed that we never, in my mind, accomplished any of it. So one day in the middle of a full day planning meeting, I just took myself up to the whiteboard and started taking all of their ideas and putting them in sequential order, kind of grouping them together, moving them around and showing them how their ideas worked together, how they were all linked and built on each other. I mean, they weren't even paying attention to me. They were so busy throwing ideas around like giddy in creation mode. And when they finally looked up and noticed the sequencing They saw how if one idea was brought to life, the rest of their ideas could happen. Now, I was terrified because I was the newbie, remember? Who was I to be up there? I didn't have their visionary brilliance, and I'm just like a mere worker beer. I'm a doer. And frankly, a doer at that point was exactly what they needed. Until I stood up there and did that stuff on the whiteboard, they couldn't see how their ideas actually formed a cohesive plan. You know, my color coding and my, my sequential clear way of writing things was like an aha for them. And I was really afraid of their judgment, but I did it anyway. And I watched my department chair examine what I'd done. And he looked at me with this look on his face and I realized he was impressed. And he said, well, you're exactly what we needed in this department. And that was the first time in my life I had felt seen for my doer talents, my worker bee talents, because I'd always hung out with visionaries and had felt less than them forever. And I just used to beat myself up that I wasn't a visionary. And in that moment, I realized I had value because I made their brains better. I made their ideas come to life. And so maybe I couldn't get paid more because, hello, I was a teacher and no one had any say over that shit. But I sure knew in that moment that I was valuable as hell. This meant I could jockey for classes I wanted to teach or which sections I got or which professional development I was allowed to do. I could be compensated because they knew I was worth it. And so I want to go back to you. Do you already know how you're worth it? It's not arrogant to know this. It's confidence to know this. And you're not bragging if you understand how you differentiate yourself from other people in your field. Let me give you another example. I want you to imagine that there's a couple and they are going to redo their bathroom in their house. They're going to gut the whole thing and they don't want to spend the extra money on an interior designer. Now, if you're a designer, you know all the mistakes that they are about to make. You know everything they're about to be up against, but they don't. They don't yet see the worth and the value of hiring an interior designer, even though you have tons of skills and tons of experience and your potential clients do not have this. You know as the designer that you're going to save them time and money and you'll help them avoid mistakes. They don't know at this point the cost of not hiring you. They just don't see your worth yet because they don't know what they're about to endure. They don't know that they're about to endure wasting hours of time researching colors and textures when you could save them all of that because you already know what works. They don't know that you've got relationships with local tradespeople and salespeople that'll save them time and money, especially when they hire that guy who's notorious for not showing up and leaving a mess. And they don't know that the wall they're planning to move to make room for their dream steam shower is a load-bearing wall. And that's bad news. And even they don't know that the wallpaper they're about to choose won't stand up to the steam and will start to mold soon. They don't know any of that. But that has nothing to do with you and your value. You know the value you bring. They're just not aware of it yet. So in the words of George Costanza, it's not you it's them. These are not your people yet. 
So I want you to remember when you're pricing yourself and you're thinking of your value, you have to remember there are people out there who are scared to make the leap. They are, they don't understand the value of hiring an expert. They're telling themselves they can't afford it, even though you know you will save them time and money in the long run. It's scary to jump for people. It's a story that they have right now. My potential clients have it. Your potential clients have it. But I promise you, there are people out there who want to work with you. Your job is to show your value. If you're a coach and there are the clients out there who decide to create their own fitness program, those are just not your people right now. But keep showing your value to them because eventually they might see that like, oh, I really need somebody to hold my hand. Or if you're the lawyer, the people out there who are looking for free online legal templates, they're not your people right now. But if you keep showing them how you differentiate yourself, the results that you get, that you save them time and money and avoid all the mistakes, then they become your clients. So even though you know people need their hands held to get their shit done, to stop wasting time and money, even though you know you make people's lives easier, better, and get them results, they just don't know that yet. So when you know your value, It is your job to share your value, to show your worth, and to price yourself accordingly. You don't have to back down on your pricing to meet these people who aren't yet ready to work with you. Keep showing up for them. Go ahead and show your worth, show your value, but not everybody's going to see it. It's not your job to save everyone. So please stop thinking you quote unquote need to make yourself more valuable. Find the people who value what you offer now. You've got to show them how you make life better and why they need you. But go back to the beginning of this podcast when you're hurtling down the highway with a phone about to die. Who are your people at a 4% battery life? Find those people. They'll think you're worth every single cent because they know that you provide something they cannot provide for themselves. And for everybody else, just keep showing up with good, valuable stuff. Go get those 4%ers. Thanks for listening all the way through. I hope today was helpful. I'd love to hear your feedback. You can always get in contact with me at my website, www.jenliddy.com. And I'll see you back here next week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more free tools and video trainings at www.jenliddy.com slash free sources. That's F-R-E-E sources. If you found this podcast helpful, I'd be so grateful if you subscribed and gave a review. And if you have a friend who'd benefit from today's topic, tool, or strategy, please share the Idea Space podcast with her. That way, together, we can help more women achieve their dreams and take action on their ideas. Isn't it time we all were able to get what we want? Join me next week. And remember, right now, all you need to do to make your idea a reality is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.